It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. Oh, the heat is on! Yeah, that's right, it's on here on Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock, from beautiful Phoenix, where it's very nice, very nice. I mean, uh... You know, I had to wear jeans, man. I, I can't be doing the shorts anymore. It's getting a little bit nipply in the morning, but it's so nice this time. You know, it, it's in, uh, you know, we're like, brr, it, it, it made it into the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's usually in the 70s during this time. Oh, it's very nice. You should come to the Freedom Summit. FreedomSummit.com. Make sure you go check that out. And we have a lot of uh, great programs. I mean, there's a lot of things to do there, but I want to get to this. I want to show you a chart. I, You know, for those that are viewing this, you can see this. This is a stock. It's uh, PAAS, and it's just a, a Pan American silver. It's just a mining company. I knew what was coming. So it, I haven't had a stock market account. You know, I got a Ameritrade or whatever. I had a stock market account for 10 years. And I go, you know, I just know where I can go. I, You know what? I'm going to go ahead and open up one just to, just so I can say I did. You see this chart? It's up uh, over 38.51 a share now. And I bought it just less than two months ago when it was down here about $24, $25. And now it's 38 Am I what? Just not an idiot. You know, I, I, I just, you know, I knew what was going to happen. So then we look at, you know, let's go ahead and take a look at gold. It's at 1388 now. You know, does 1500 seem that far away? 2000, 3000? You know, no. And, and, and we got silver. What's silver at now? Silver's at 2839. So it'll, it'll break 30, and then it's, you know, to the moon, Alice. So I, I'm, and, and what's kind of driving this stuff? Today on Freedoms Phoenix, you have this one uh, article. It's U.S. ready to back bigger EU, European Union, stability fund. So the United States is ready to support the extension of the European Financial Stability Facility via an extra commitment of money from the International Monetary Fund, a U.S. official told, told Reuters on Wednesday. So we're getting involved in Europe's bailout too. Wow, I'm you know I mean does it, and then what are we looking at the stock market today? Shot up, it's up two hundred and fifty seven points. Why? Well, it you know it broke me. It went into the tenth. That broke eleven thousand yesterday during trading. And so on. They're going, ooh man, it could be going down. It's going. Oh my God, it's going to go go down. It's going to, boom, up two hundred fifty seven points based on doesn't matter. You know, this is all just pretend. It's, it benefits, I don't know, some companies. Because the Dow's what? You know, 30 companies? I mean, I, I'm, I, I, wow. And I, and it's inflated dollars anyway, so what do we care? So then we go to the United States and Panama, Panama sign new tax information exchange agreement. Now, this is something that is of interest to a lot of people. Is Panama dead? We have an article up from The Sovereign Man. It's SovereignMan.com, I believe. And you go um, to the site, and we put it under off-grid living a lot because he's about you know, going around the world, and uh, where do you go? I mean, where are you going to find freedom? How are you going to, you know, dodge the man? You know, and you can do it legally. You know, we have, and he's talking about these tax agreements between countries. They're not, you know, necessarily bad, except for the fact that they're taxing you to begin with. You know, that's one of the problems. And what they do is he gives an example of like Australia and Malaysia have a deal to where if you're an individual or or a corporation and you're doing business in one of the countries, you're not paying taxes on the same income in both countries. They go, ah, we don't want to do that. We want to promote trade and kind of, okay, fine. But here in America, we have the heavy hand of we're the banks and we can do whatever the heck we want. So what they do? The article is titled, Is Panama Dead? And he just highlights five things here. One, the treaty is clearly one-sided, designed for the U.S. government to obtain information from the Panamanian Panamanian financial system about U.S. taxpayers, not the other way around. So you don't have Panama gets to have access to United States information, but gosh darn it, if we ain't making sure we're getting it from Panama. Because uh, Panama has been, has a large um, expatriates of, of 
Americans there because the bases in the canal and so on. So there are a lot of people I know, they go and visit Panama. They even may have bought land there. They, you know, have some ties and opportunities there. Two, the requesting party, U.S. government, does not need to provide detail on the targets of its request. The requesting party, three, the requesting party does not even need to have an immediate use for the information be requested, like a you know imminent lawsuit or criminal tax investigation or anything. It's just we got access, give us the information. We're total information awareness. Okay. Four. Information about beneficial ownership of corporations and foundations is also fair game. So this is like anybody incorporates down there or they have a foundation or anything, you know, whatever. You know, we get all that, too. The sharing of information is retroactive. They can request information from years ago as long as the records exist. Okay. So I'm, I'm I, you know, there is a lot of reasons to be concerned. You know, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm, you know, how bad does it have to get? How bad will it get? Well, there's an article on there we have. It's called Lessons from the Fall of Rome. And the main thing is that they're they're talking about is is this country worth saving, and it goes through the history of Rome and and how uh, it went from this leader to this leader to this leader, and then they started having Caesars and emperors, and kind of got and it just devolved into the more consolidated you have power and the more homogenous or big the state is, you know, everything's a contagion. You know, they, they, if you got central plan, well, everybody's on the plan and something's wrong with the plan. Everybody suffers. You don't have this, the diversity of, of anything. It's all a central plan. Well, is there a central plan for freedom? I don't think so. You know, freedom is about not having a central plan, you know, go do what you want. Well, it goes through the uh, what we're really fighting is not uh, the state as much as we're fighting ourselves. We we continually support this idea of the state of the government, and they're really creative in how they get you to do it too. I mean, you know, as a, a young person, you're pledging allegiance from your first memories. You're going to school, man, and then what do they do? They add kindergarten. You know, they extended it into junior high. They extended it into high school. They extended it into college. You know, they, they, they want to get you, your mind more and more, certainly while it's pliable as you're young and you're, and you're growing up. And then they, well, it's not working. We're not getting them, you know, to be our little cogs in our machine enough, so we need to go younger, go to kindergarten. Then they go to preschool. Then they got here in Arizona, man, they got pre-preschool. It's like nursery, you know, government-funded. That was one of Jant Napolitano's things. Big deal. Got to have, got to have, you know, government-funded you know, subsidize so you can have your three-year-old go in and get babysat. This is dangerous stuff. And are we going to continue to support this system with our taxes and our, our sweat and our toil and our future generations to just have this keep plodding along? How long can they do that? Do, do they think that it's starting to crumble? I think this S510 is a really good sign. They're like, hey, man, we don't want to compete with people out there sustaining themselves, being off-grid. The technology is changing. We had on Freedoms Phoenix, you go to the off-grid living uh, section, there was a story that we had that um, called a portable farm. And all it is is a tank that's probably... Oh, I don't know. It's like the size of a big hot tub, you know, a jacuzzi or something. And you have these koi-like fish that are in there. Well, of course, they grow and you can eat them. But what they do is it's on top of it. I mean, right next to it, you have a hydroponics where it filters the water and the nutrients from the waste of the fish is just, you know, like candy to vegetables. So you've got meat and vegetables, and it's in a small area the size of a greenhouse, and you're just sitting here producing food. How does that enter into it? Got to have the safety police coming in, checking my food. The food police. Ah. There's some more we want to go over when we come back before we talk to Barbara Peterson from Farm Wars. Farmwars.com. Go check that out during the break. And uh, I'm telling you, you know, there's uh, lots of things to be concerned about. Talk about more here and declare your independence in just a little bit.